Hello, I'm Ryan F9 and these are my top five helmets under 200 bucks. For a standard full face, give me the Bell Qualifier all day long. And it comes in a billion colorways, but most of them, like this cam red, cost me about 150 bucks. The main thing I like is the way that it feels. Out of all the helmets I've reviewed this season, the Cheapo Bell Qualifier is actually my favorite to wear. And the cheek pads are contoured very well, and there's a soft neck roll at the back that snugs up really nice. Sure, it could just be that my particular head works well in here, but I can say that the Bell Qualifier will feel lightweight on anybody. This size large is 1,470 grams, and that is objectively awesome for a polycarbonate bucket. Features are good too. We have glove operable vents on the chin bar and then above the forehead, and then we have four exhaust ports coming out the back. Now we also get this quick release visor here, and then recesses for speakers in the EPS foam. Now those are small little things, but they're still rare things to find on a budget lid. Low lights make a pretty short list. The shield mechanism is clunky and strangely loud, and it's also only DOT rated this helmet, so that puts an extra butterfly in my stomach when I ride in it. The main thing, however, though, for me, is the road noise. To be totally honest about it, the qualifier is loud as hell. Thinment-wise, the qualifier is an intermediate head shape, and it fits true to the sizing chart online. Now, I personally wouldn't go modular for under 200 bucks. Flip-up mechanisms are complicated, so offering them cheap normally means that a manufacturer has to skimp out on weight, quietness, and worst of all, safety. But if I absolutely need a modular helmet and I don't have much coin, it's the HAC CL Max 2 at $190. What I love about the CL Max 2 is that it cuts the right corners. There's no drop down sunshade in here, so that saves weight. It also means that the shell and the EPS foam doesn't have to make room up here for that extra lens. There's also really minimal ventilation, just one active vent on the chin bar, two little ones on the forehead, and then there's a really tiny passive exhaust slit at the rear. So not too much, but again, that helps the shell to stay very smooth and very uniform. The result is that this extra large comes in at 1,700 grams, which is actually very light for a polycarbonate modular. I also suspect that it's on the safer end of its DOT rating because of how uniform the shell is. I noticed a couple highlights that I didn't expect on a budget option. Now for one, HJC included a pinlock shield in the box, and uh, they really didn't have to do that on a $200 lid. Now the other thing is I have this one-hand glove operable chin bar release and this quick release shield. The CL Max 2 also has this little Bluetooth port here for Chatterbox XBI 2-H intercom system. To be honest though, I think Chatterbox makes awful comm systems, so my preference would be to throw a Senna or a Cardo on the outside of this helmet anyway. Just forget the port. I put a 20S on an outside one of these guys last year, didn't have any problems. Like I said, I probably wouldn't buy a cheap modular to begin with, but if I absolutely had to, then the CL Max 2 is the best option for me. It's a round head shape, by the way. It fits all right on my intermediate noggin. There's a little bit of draft underneath the chin bar, but that's probably an issue with the helmet rather than the fit. Next up, an Adventure Helmet, and this is G-Max's GM11, and it's actually a four-season multi-purpose lid. Adventure touring in the summer, snowmobiling in the winter. I was skeptical at first, because this is a $150 lid that claims to do the job of two helmets. But as far as I can tell, G-Max has pulled it off. Removable sun peak, removable face shield, double lens for anti-fogging, speaker pockets, removable and washable liner, chin curtain, breath guard, six chin bar vents, two forehead vents, two chimneys, and six exhaust vents. One thing you won't find in the stats is that this face shield actually opens really wide, and I quite like that because I can use almost any type of goggle in here, whether I keep the face shield on or whether I take it off. Now the other thing is the weight, which is quite impressive. It's 1,830 grams for this size large, and that's pretty good considering this is a basic plastic shell with a full sun peak and an extended chin bar. Of course, I do have a few gripes. I wish G-Max had given us thumb screws rather than Phillips heads here. Because this sun peak is not very aerodynamic, so I'm probably gonna be taking it off a lot. And the other thing is that this helmet is only DOT rated. Personally, I have a bit more peace of mind in an ECE or a Snell lid. But hey, it's a functional ADV helmet, 50-50 on-road, off-road terrain. It also works on a snowmobile. It's an intermediate head shape that's gonna fit a lot of people, myself included, and it only costs $150. I mean, if my only gripes are a couple of screws and a safety sticker, then maybe I shouldn't be complaining at all. Now, my top pick for a three-quarter helmet? Well, that's easy. The Bell Custom 500 is my favorite open face helmet on the entire market. And happy day, it just happens to cost less than $200. Bella's particularly fond of this helmet, probably because the 500 was the first one ever formed by the company's founder, Roy Richter. And just like in 1954, this is a simple fiberglass bucket. No ventilation, no removable liner, nothing. The custom 500 is as minimal as it gets, and minimalism is what it does best. 
See, this size large is a featherweight 1100 grams, and it's incredibly slim. You know, Bell offers five different shell sizes and EPS sizes across their range just to make sure that my head gets the lowest possible profile from this helmet. By the way, it works best with an intermediate head shape. What else do I need to know? Well, it's gonna be DOT and ECE rated, so the three quarters of my head that are actually covered by it are gonna be pretty safe. It comes in about a billion colorways, and if I want a totally blank canvas to work with, then this bell sticker on the front actually peels off. And this five snap design on the front makes it compatible with a whole bunch of visors and bubble shields and all that jazz from Bell or from Biltwell or something like that. And on the inside of this helmet, it's quilted. At 150 to 180 ish, I actually think the Custom 500 is underpriced. When it comes to half helmets, the King of the Hill also clocks in beneath that $200 price point. And of course, I'm referring to the Bell Pit Boss. Everything you need to know about this helmet can be counted on three fingers. One, speed dial adjustment system. It's stolen right from the bicycle world. You just turn this little wheel and the interior of the helmet snugs up to create a custom fit. Because of this, the Bell Pit Boss is usually the one I recommend to people with round or oval heads. Two, drop down sun visor. That pretty much speaks for itself. I just wish Bell had provided a spare clear lens as well because it'd be nice to have some eye protection for riding at night. And three, Trimatrix shell construction. Trimatrix is a weave of Kevlar, carbon fiber, and fiberglass. And on a full face helmet, it can actually save a lot of weight. A little bucket like this though, I mean, yeah, it makes it a little bit lighter and thinner, but primarily it just racks up the price tag. And that's it for my top five helmets under $200. Thank you guys very much for watching.